Greetings to you wherever you could be watching us from. Welcome to another episode of UJ Sport on UJ TV. My name is Colin Maipa, the Communications Coordinator here at the University of Johannesburg. I'm excited about today's episode as we speak to former captain of the South African Proteus, that's the senior women netball team. Yeah? Spa Proteus. Spa Proteus. <laughs> Uh, Bongi Wamsomi, who's guiding the UJ troops here, the UJ Netball Club. Um, she's here to tell us about the USA preparations for this year, as well as some of the players that we can look out for today. Hey, ma'am, how are you? I'm um, very good, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about your USA preparations so far. We've had a couple of meetings, um, and um, I see that the team is quite in good spirits. Um, how are the preparations? preparations for the USA uh, tournament this year, you, with UJ being the host? Um, firstly, I'd say we're quite excited that we don't have to travel. Always nice to play at home and <laughs> people would know how UJ fans are. So we're hoping that everyone can come in numbers. And understanding, obviously, that it's also during the, I guess, the break times in terms of university, everyone will be at home. But yeah, we're quite pleased that we are able to, I think, take our three teams for this year. We have UJ 1, 2 and 3. And uh, part of my role at UJ is to make sure that we have numbers, we have depth, we have development. So I'm really pleased that uh, this year we could actually, uh, for the first time, males are part of the, um, I guess, USA tournament. We are able to fixture a team. Uh, but UJ 1, per se, is actually, I guess, everyone is looking forward to it. Last year we finished fourth. Um, and it was probably very de devastating because I thought when we played free states um, at the semi-final, we actually had a good go, uh, but things happened. So we didn't have that one and uh, we're looking forward to seeing how we do this year. I think the team has grown. A uh, couple of changes within the team, but I'm very excited with all the new girls coming in. Always a new chance for players for me. It's, it's, it's just an exciting part of what I do. Yeah. All right, so we spoke about uh, the number of teams that are coming here. Just tell us, um, how is the tournament organized? So I understand there's the UJ1 team, mm -hmm. which is your main team, yeah. the seniors, and then there's the, the, the UJ2, mm -hmm. and then there's also the males yeah. team. Please just tell us, how is the, uh, the tournament organized in terms of, I know there's like pool A, pool B, Interviews, pool C. Okay. Yeah, and then just break it down for us, and then tell us who's playing in which pool. Okay, so... Um UJ1 plays in Super League Division, which is the highest, uh, I guess, level of USA uh, netball. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a Super League and there's a Premier Le Premier League. So we're in the Super. Then uh, UJ2 plays in the B Division. We've actually have, we've won the B, B Division, I think it's been three three years, nine in a row, if I'm not mistaken. But UJ2 can be promoted to UJ, um, can be promoted to um, this, the Premier League to try and go to Super because there's already one team there. So the rule doesn't allow for t two teams to be in a division mm -hmm. uh, then there's obviously the males division now which has about 17 teams which is quite exciting because for the first time to have so many teams joining i think that's a, a huge excitement and i think the exciting part for us is um preparations getting to where we are because we really have to think around in terms of uh, recruitment and um, having to get really i guess certain standard of players on board but also in terms of trainings preparations up to now it's been really fantastic i'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing you know how the players do i think the best part of all of this is uh, the more numbers you have it means you're giving a lot of players a chance to participate we have to say thanks to you, Jay, for that. It's really quite hard to fix track three teams. It's not something that you can just do as you please. If you have to consider, I guess, all kits, accommodation, you know, all the necess necessaries that you need to actually put in place. But yeah, we, we're really looking forward to how, you know, this goes. Obviously, we will also want to have a B division all the time, a B team all the time, just purely because if you have an A division uh, and yet A team that needs to be in A division um, or Premier or Super, for instance, um, you want to know that should changes happen, you know, university standard is also mainly about who do you have within which year as players graduate and leave university, you kind of have to have the team that fills up that gap. And I think we've been um, really doing well in terms of having that group that's filling in the gap. So I think that's the excitement um, more about this USA for this year. Uh, there might be certain faces that are not part of, I guess the USA team in terms of the Super League level, uh, but there's new faces that will come on board. So, sp speaking of the new faces, I just wanted you to tell the, the viewer who are some of the familiar faces that they will see back in the USA this year, mm. and um, who are some of maybe the names that we know from varsity netball from last year or even two years ago? <laughs> um, I think. Um, in terms of, I guess, the familiar faces, it will be the likes of uh, Tali, Marty, hopefully, 
she can actually take court this year. We know she, she's been injured. She was out for like about 12 months. Been playing fantastic netball, so it'd be great to see her back. Um, we will probably see the likes of, uh, I guess, Boy um, Mashogo, you know, Cornelia Mupenda, uh, quite an exciting talent in Yanke, Brock Drake. Um, there's quite a few kids also really uh, putting their hands up in Alex Memaris. She also had a crack at uh, TNL for the first time this year, played for Barbabs, which is something that we're excited about. Um, and this is just for a, kind of a group that was kind of there, but some of them re not really in the Super. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing the likes of Alex and them getting a chance to be in the Super League um, division, hopefully. But um, the new ones, oh no, I guess the ones that were not part of, I guess, the picture um, has to be a surprise for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so um, speaking of the familiar faces, mm. the um, some players that we've seen play in the national team, mm. of course, Tale um, couldn't play because of the long injury there mm. just before the World Cup. And then we also saw some players like Owe2 or Semi Ngubani yep. Yep. Um, going to Scotland mm. to play for Streth Clyde. Um, and then also Nomfundom um, Gomezulu. Are we? Are we? Is there any restrictions in the USA Championships, like in varsity netball, for instance? You can't play if you're over 25, um, or if you didn't meet a certain academic uh, pass mark. Um, is there such regulations in USA? Uh, I'm actually glad you asked this question. There's at USA, there's not much restrictions in terms of that, but within UJ netball, there are restrictions. So we're very big in um, academic and sports so you have to have certain requirements in terms of your academics if you don't uh, meet those requirements you cannot be part of high performance squad within that year so there might be a couple of faces that you might not see just purely because they got given a chance this year to having to focus on their books and that's because we're looking at uh, their future in terms of academics plus netball as as one moves it has to move with the other and that's how we work and um the big part of it is it, we're still really excited that they're not completely failing but when we see the gap of in terms of there's no balance between the two as much as we would want it as much as our standards ask for we then give you a gap so you might see a face or two that might not make it just purely because of that and then um, club members are there any club members that are playing USA or do you have to be a student registered student to participate in USA um, for netball you have to be a student um, to play in USA so everyone who is part of USA I guess UJ um, for USA this year is definitely a UJ netball club member um, but a student as well so you have to be a student uh, for this year to play USA to represent the university just take us or take the viewer down um, memory lane i know that uh, your club has done amazing stuff you reached the semi-final of the varsity netball in 2022 for the first time unfortunately losing to stellenbosch uh, uh, in the western cape 2022 and then last year was the final yeah. where you reached True. the yeah. final not the semi yeah. right um you've done really quite well there and then we've seen actually the national team also mm. picking four of your players mm. that was tale mate with dumelo Mahlogo, Nomfundo Mkomezulu as well as Owe2. Mm. And of course, Nomfundo Cornelio, well, Cornelio yeah. yes, for Namibia. And then Nomfundo and um, what's the name? Uh, Buitumelo got to play f in the Quad Series yeah. in Cape Town uh, January last year, right? Uh, Even in Australia, they went there together. Yes, yeah. yeah? So, but they couldn't make the final selection mm, for the team mm. that played the World Cup. It was only yourself as the captain, of mm. course, as and well Semi. as uh, Semi. Yeah. Um, you guys seem to be producing such, uh, you know, talented people. Mm. How do you guys do it and how are you different from other universities? Uh, I think uh, <laughs> that's an interesting one. We, we really do put in the work. Um, if I can tell you now how, many, how much time we spend on netball courts in a day, uh, you wouldn't believe it. And it's purely just to make sure that we give, I guess, the players as much time as we can give to them. And I think part of, um, not I think part of me uh, retiring was also really just being excited about the amount of time I'm going to have at UJ and having to see a lot of players and working with them. And um, I think that actually is happening this year, which is really quite exciting. There's a lot of things I do on the side as well, uh, but th that was also the main focus. But to think about it, um, you don't just get players to play at that level without their commitment. And I have to really respect the fact that they respect us and um, they also respect, I guess, our players 
plans, but I also really have a good team behind me. Um, Nomsa, Nandi, um, Kanyiso have been doing a fantastic job, um, you know, in terms of backing the plans that personally I would have, but also the plans for, I guess, UJ Netball. And we've got now Tess on board, who's just joined us as one of our coaches. Um, really, the people that we work with fit into our culture really well. I think that's something that I specifically also look at in terms of who we work with. But I also just love the idea of really just young people coming together, putting the passion, you know, behind whatever they do. And I think that's what um, helps us in ending up, I guess, surprisingly producing such talent. And we get them with talent and all we do is just to polish it. I think at this point, I can proudly say we've been actually really doing good work. So to see Semi leaving South Africa, of course, to go and play in Scotland. I once We once sat down right here on UJ TV um, and we spoke about how they look up to you as their players and you being the national uh, uh, team uh, captain. Of course, now you've retired. Do you think that we can still see some future stars coming from UJ going abroad, just as you did before, you know, when you were playing um, uh, during your time here uh, um, in South Africa? I would definitely hope so. Um, I honestly, just um, I think it always has to be performance-based for a player to be picked at national level and um, the amount of work that we put in, I, I really want to believe that we can uh, be able to produce uh, players at you know, of that caliber. It can't be obviously constantly every year, uh, but it's something that I think we are able to, to do. And I don't think uh, Bongi have, have to be physically there to, for that to happen. I think if we, we put in the work and the player can be able to go out wherever they are and present themselves, they should be able to actually, you know, make it to whatever the standard of netball they can make. Really proud of uh, Semi. Um, we saw on social media as well that she was a fans player um, of the season, uh, you know, in England. And I think it's, it's things like that don't just come you know, by chance or by luck. They say in sports, you get more luck, the more hard work you put in. And I think the work that she has put in herself, um, we will all know like adversity, we didn't even hide it, that she was actually struggling at some point in terms of her form. We put her on and off, trying to make sure that we don't really, um, you know, get her to be so much on court that she, she's, struggling and everyone can see that and even herself will constantly struggle but to try and balance the idea of how do we bring her back how do we bring her form back and i think the timing of her as she was constantly trying to bring her form back um having to go over to um england it actually just you know it, it did wonders a couple of games that i've watched of her playing confidence wise and i know i've said this before you go play overseas when you come back you're a completely different person because you have to go there alone you literally look after yourself on and off the courts and besides that the standard you know of play is completely different to you know what happens here but you're also aware that it's not just about playing i signed a contract you know i need to perform and i think for her at her age to be able to do that you can only imagine how many years hopefully you know she get a lot of these opportunities and go overseas and the start of it is, for me is the excitement of that because not all universities get to have a student that is currently studying and still get a contract to go overseas usually you see it after a student has finished university and I think for us it's such a hype that we can actually see this happening in front of our faces and then you can only hope you know it's not going to be the end of of the journey it's actually she's actually starting it for other players as well yeah. not only here you know we're hoping everywhere else as well so let's speak about TNL. I think this is my second last question. Um, TNL is obviously played around May, June, yeah. just before the Winter User Games. Um, do you, how, how, how important do you think that is? Um, maybe just share with us the pros and cons. Because a player can go and play for a provincial team in the TNL and then come back injured or, or you know maybe picked up an injury I don't know maybe it's one of the other things that could happen in the tournament how how important of a preparatory phase is the TNL for users um, I think preparatory phase for me is more of what we do here in terms of high performance and um, the group preparing for university first and then whatever that happens in in between we obviously know there will be squad camps where the players that are involved within the national side will have to go to the camps and that also then plays part in preparing Preparing within the season because unfortunately netball doesn't really stop you play at university and then just before you know it you have to be at national camps and before you know it's then there's, uh, there's actually TNL we have to respect the idea of TNL because it's actually the highest netball league in our country and we want our players to play there because I guess it's part of the selection process as well for you to to play at national level you can't do that without being part of TNL or part of national championships so part of the university to to support that I think it's actually a great idea like you said, it comes with the pros and cons, obviously, because um, you, you literally sit and hope. And at this point that I'm a coach, I honestly sit and hope. And, you know, that's, they all really 
apart from the great performances um, individually and their teams, you know, performing really well. But it's also a concern of I really hope, you know, everything goes well and um, no one get injuries. And you can't also really, unfortunately, dwell on that because injuries can happen anywhere. We know that some players actually get a serious injury at training. Um, so I think that's where we can't say, no, you can't send your players to TNL because you want them to progress in their Nepal career. But also, even if you had said go or don't go, an injury can happen at home. You know, so it's really just, um, I guess, us allowing the process. And when the process happens, I guess one has to deal with the idea of, did you really do enough work in terms of development? If anything happens within the players that are at TNL, do you have numbers to back that? And I can say Say this proudly that with the girls that have been at TNL, we've done a lot of work with the girls that were behind in trying to make sure that when they come back, everyone fits into the same standards so we don't have different levels. And I really think um, they're all looking forward to USA, which is quite exciting. Yeah. I'm just happy that USA is right here in the backyard um, here in Johannesburg. We don't have to travel to the Western Cape or to Pretoria. Yeah, just coach one last one. Um, the students at UJ are in the races, some of them are remaining behind. Mm -hmm. Some are in the, you know, residences outside of uh, campuses. Some, of course, went home for the winter recess. Um, what do you say to them? Because they need to come here and cheer your teams. They need to come here and add the numbers in terms of spectators. Mm. What do you have to say to them? Come and enjoy um, a, a game of netball. Is it free? Do they have to buy a ticket? What do you say to them? Um, before we even get to tickets, I want to say until today, I still need to say thank you so much to UJ fans for all the supports, especially for the Vasti Cup last year, Vasti Netball last year. I think they were fantastic. Everywhere we went, uh, we really saw orange coming in numbers. That I think people take, um, you know, take it for granted how beautiful it is for a team to know that they've got the backup, they've got the support actually from home because UJ for us is home and uh, we're very big as a club in, in terms of, you know, orange being out there. Everything we do, we want to put our colours out there and, you know, I, I was quite pleased last year and I think uh, part of our performances, it might have been, I think, triggered by that. Um, UJ supporters, um, students, I know it's probably going to be uh, during the break time that we play USA at home. Please do come in numbers and support us. Um, you've done a fantastic job last year, so I know you're going to come in numbers anyway this year. Please, we're going to see you then. We're going to perform for you. What was the score again? It was 51, 53 or 52, yes, yes. somewhere there, very close. They had to go, they had to go into extra time. I've never seen that in a game of netball, but it was a final. So there, there was a tie at 50, 51, somewhere there. And then they had to go in extra time and the team that scores how many points? Two points. Two points. Extra time. So yeah. You still draw, then you go to extra. Yeah. And it happened that way. Yeah. yeah. Exciting stuff. Coach, before I let you go with three teams. Um, two being female teams, UJ1, UJ2, and then the male team for the first time in the history of users this year. Do we see any of these teams uh, retaining the cup or the trophy in Johannesburg? <laughs> Big question. Everyone goes to competition wanting that to happen. So we can only hope that, you know, one way or the other, cup can stay at home. I think we do work hard for that and we can hope that it happens. Um, if it doesn't, we can hope really for great performances. That, that for me will be actually even pleasing as well. And, and we actually have to train and prepare for that. One thing, you're putting short. What do you say about UJ Netball for these users this year? Exciting. That's all. Okay. <laughs> there you have it. So this was Coach Bongi Wemsomi the coach and manager of the UJ Netball Club here at the University of Johannesburg. Of course, a retired national captain for the Spa Proteus here in South Africa. She has done amazing things in the Vitality Netball World Cup last year, finishing in fifth position, right? Sixth, sixth position, yeah. So uh, please come through from the 1st of July to the 5th of July. Um, there will be a number of teams battling it out here, universities across South Africa gathered in Johannesburg for the glory of netball. Please come and support and enjoy the USA Netball Championship at UJ with us here at UJ TV. Here with me is the Netball UJ2 team here at the University of Johannesburg, Nandipa Jack, who's going to tell us about UJ Team 2 having won a gold medal in Stellenbosch last year, and what do they have to do this year? Ma'am, please just tell us the preparations for your team, UJ2. Um, obviously, you have to retain the championship. It has, to, it has to stay in Johannesburg. What do you think you have to do differently this year? 
Um, I think what we have to do differently this year um, is just to maintain the talent that we have. We have such a good big group of girls that come from different backgrounds and it is um, trying to get the strength of what works for us as UJ um, in terms of what we need or what we lacked from last year. Perhaps we can say maybe defensively we didn't have enough defenders last year but we still maintained um, a good high spirit of in terms of what we wanted to achieve as a team. So I think this year is was just about filling the gaps of what we lacked um, in Stellenbosch and just making sure those gaps that we lacked are now strong. We've come up with people and players that can go into those uh, positions and take on the, the game every time we play we, we, with the goal of we want to maintain and retain our gold medal. Yeah. Some of the names or the people that you want to share maybe in your team that we can look out for? Um, we're still finalizing players. To, um, today is the last day of trials, but we hope we're hoping that we can have some of the new talent. New talent that to look out for will be Ogamo Muzebe, um, will be Kachi Mukachisiwe, um, who's coming back. Uh, we're hoping that she might come back, but she's also looking so good this season that uh, she might go on the A side, have a crack at the A side. But we have a lot of young, talented players like the girls who are coming back from TNL. You are pure to senior coming into our teams as strong um, individuals. So we're hoping that those players can come into our team and take their position and lead us to victory. Thank you, Nandi. All the best in the USA Championship. Thank you. So since there's going to be a male's version of the USA tournament or the USA Championship this year for the first time in South Africa, we've got here the head coach for the male's team here at the UJ Netball Club. Ms. Nomsa Zungu, who's going to tell us about their preparations for the USA tournament, as well as the composition of the squad. Ma'am, thank you for your time. Please just tell us about your preparations for the UJ male team for the USA. Um, uh, thank you so much, Colin. Uh, we actually prepared very well because we have such... In fact, at UJ, we are lucky to have such girls with such caliber SA players and international players. So we get to we get to train against them, and it brings different competition all together. And obviously, we have tried to play against outside club to give the boys a version of a competition they might expect in the in the whole setup of the users. And obviously, we're excited to have the USA tournament for the gents as well and leading the, 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 the tribe, the troops, it's actually quite interesting because they all give different skill and we, we're obviously not trying to take away what they have, the raw talent, we're just trying to top up and hope for the best. Right. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us wherever you could be from. I'm very excited about this year's championship right here at the University of Johannesburg. Come through to the UJ Netball Courts here in, in, in West Dean and witness the spectacle of this beautiful championship. All right. Subscribe to UJ TV on our YouTube channel. We need the numbers. Watch the episodes, share them. Hashtag UJ all the way. Hashtag UJ TV. As you share and watch all these episodes, please tell us in the comment section what do you think of the UJ Netball team. Next time, ciao. The University of Johannesburg, the future reimagined.